You got anything back there? Sweet. Okay, so uh, we're going to sort of pick up where we left off last time and sort of start over. Uh, we'll go through the first parts pretty quickly. Does everyone, how many people here have IntelliJ installed now? Hopefully this completed kind of over, is that a semi yes or? Okay. Um, sweet. Okay. So let's go through, okay, there is a guy. Let's go through the process of setting up our project again. And today we'll, we'll, uh, we'll repeat a few things, but we'll also add some new steps. Uh, we'll get to the point where we have something committed to Git. And then we'll start the process of building a, um, a simple web API. Um, so just to give you a sense of where we're going with this, um, I'd like to get to the point where, you know, to some degree what we're doing for the next couple of classes seems like a little bit kind of munging around, just getting things to work. And that's, that's normal. Um, we will get back to writing some Kotlin code at some point, but I'd like to get us to the point where we have a project that we can work on together that we'll kind of come back to throughout the semester. And um, so, you know, part of what, part of what we're doing with this class is, is thinking about ways to teach, you know, people how to use Kotlin. Uh, but something else we're doing is we're thinking about um, what are some material that we can teach sort of complementary to what people learn in 125. So in 125, we do a lot of focus on Android development. Uh, we've given students a backend to use. Um, in this course and in a new second semester course that we may teach in the future here, um, our thinking is that let's have people actually work on writing a backend. Right? So that gives you experience with a different type of environment, um, different type of programming. It's also fun. Um, there's some bits and pieces to it that are different um, that may sort of challenge you guys. But and so some of you know we're, we're going to sort of do this experiment together, right? So my goal, right? See how far we get, is to get to the point where you guys are all able to um, build a simple backend web app, uh, web API in Kotlin, uh, and deploy it on using essentially by containerizing it and then using a, a container deployment server, right? How many people have used Docker before here? Okay, so Docker is the single most important technology that's probably been invented in the last 20 years. So everybody in here should figure out how to use it and we'll do some of that together. So um, anyway, we'll see, how, we'll see how this goes. Um, again, these are not uh, skills that we normally teach here, but I think these are uh, what I'm showing you is kind of best practices for deploying uh, simple web APIs that could eventually, you know, kind of what we'll do is we'll build a little microservice together. That's one way to think about it. It won't be complicated. The logic that we embed within this won't be hard. But the process of building it, deploying it, updating it, um, things like that, will be things that you guys can utilize as you work on a final project or something more complicated for you. All right, so let's start over. Um, now, you know, somebody came up to me last time and it was clear that they had, they had repeated these steps a couple of times. Um, here's, here's my suggestion, right? When you guys are getting started creating development environments, if something goes wrong, start over. Like nuke what you did and start over. Now, if you have a lot of code in there, not a good idea, right? But when you're getting started, if things don't get set up the way you want, right? Or something weird is happening or going wrong, or maybe you tried to fix a problem and you end up making a mess, Right, a lot of things happen that were bad. Just feel free to start over, right? Like this is something that I do all the time, right? Particularly when I'm using a new tool or new environment, it takes some practice like anything else to get to the point where you have something sync, right? Something that's gonna make you happy and allow you to develop in a productive way. All right, so we did this last time, but it's not bad practice. Um, so we wanna use uh, the Kotlin build script to configure Gradle, and then we're picking Kotlin JVM. That's how we're gonna write um, write the code for our project. Let's pick a name. I'm going to call this hello. This is the little service that we're going to work on. And now we're going to click finish. We're going to sit here and wait for a couple of minutes um, for this to finish doing its work. Well, it looks like it's close to being done. Okay. So as a reminder, we have, if we look in our in our project, and this is going to update in a minute because it's going to create the source directories and the test directories for us. That may take a minute for you. Um, last time we looked at this file, this is our Gradle configuration. This tells the Gradle build tool how to perform various tasks related to developing our project. Right? This is, it tells it how to, 
how to build the project, what libraries we're using, uh, where to get those libraries, and then various configuration associated with certain things that we don't want to do, like in this case, you know, telling it when we compile Kotlin, uh, which version of the bytecode to use. Now, as we go through today's example, there's gonna be a couple of places. So again, um, I'm gonna apologize in advance on behalf of Gradle, okay? Uh, Gradle is not only um, at some point, I'll see if it's mad at me now, Let's see if I reopen it, if this will go away. Um, Gradle can not only be extremely complicated, um, but because the tool has gone through several, it, several iterations, um, you will frequently, there's gonna be a couple points today where we're gonna be looking for solutions to problems that we encounter as we go through this, and we're gonna find things that we're gonna have to modify to fit into our environment. So unfortunately, there's lots of different languages that you have to use to configure Gradle, and so if you guys find things online and try to cut and paste stuff into this Gradle configuration, it's not always going to work, right? And so there's a little bit of thinking and kind of um, reformatting that you might have to do along the way to get stuff to work, and I'll, and I'll give you some hints about how to do that. This is, but just so you know, this is a part of using Gradle, right? If you guys have questions about this, you know, ask on our forum or whatever, um, you know, there's enough expertise about how to between me and, and Harsh and Ben and some other people. There's enough expertise at this point about how to use Gradle within our community that we're, we can probably help. All right, so at this point, um, what I can do is I can build my application. I don't have any source files yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, again, to satisfy my OCD nature. Well, actually, sorry. Let's do something simple first. So what did, we missed a step last time in terms of something that we always do as developers, whenever we start a new project, it is like the second or the first thing that we do. Sometimes it's entirely the first thing, sometimes it's the second thing. What did we miss? Yes, create a git repo. Uh. We did not Im import this. So right now this is not under version control and that is not okay. Um, you do not want that, trust me. Like I said, I mean, the first thing a lot of times when you're, if you're starting a project, if, if you're familiar with the command line or whatever, that's the first thing you do, right? Is I create a Git repository and then I start adding things to it, okay? Um, in the past, a lot of times, I think for the classes you guys have taken, you have cloned a Git repository. So you haven't done this step, right? You've been given a Git repository to use and then you've been working inside of it, right? Here, can you guys just not talk the entire class? Thanks, it's distracting for me because I'm standing up. So what we need to do is we actually need to create the Git repository here, right? There's a way to do this in IntelliJ. How many people have ever done this in IntelliJ before? Okay, only a handful, good. So let's, I'll show you the rest of you. If we go over here to the VCS tab, what I actually want to do is click on enable version control integration. Um, and then it's going to ask me which version control system I want to use. I want to use Git, I click okay. If you haven't set up Git on your machine, you may not have that option. Hopefully this is, uh, I think when you, if you guys took 125, we installed Git on your machine. If you didn't, you can back up and, and complete that step later. So now this is done. Now I have a Git repository, and you'll see that one of the things that's changed is IntelliJ is now telling me that certain files um, are, these are untracked, right? They're files that I need to add to my project, okay? Um, all right, so let's, see what happens if I try to do a commit. So first of all, let's go up here, because again, when, when you start with Git, when you create a Git repository, at the beginning, there's nothing there. It's just empty. Right? I have to tell Git which files I actually want to include in the repository. And then I need to tell Git which files I don't want to include. Right? So if I go over and I, and I initialize the commit dialog, let's see what's actually changed, okay? So I've got, um, you know, it's, it's telling me I've got a bunch of sort of un, you know, these, none of these, I don't think any of these files are actually going to be committed, right? It gives me the option to choose them and do not do this, okay? But this is a sense of um, what files I could add to my Git repository. And again, please don't click on them and actually add them, right? Because these, many of these things are things that we don't want. All right, so one of the, and again, I suspect many of you guys have never done this before. So when, whenever you're using Git, it's as important to tell Git about things that you don't want to include in your repository as it is to tell it about things that you do want to include. If 
you guys just add everything to your Git repository, it's going to be full of crap that changes all the time, right? Every time you build this project, it generates new class files and all sorts of stuff like that. We don't want that. Every time Gradle downloads repository, uh, uh, new files, it sticks them in this hidden directory in there, and we don't want that either, okay? Anyone know how to fix this problem? Yeah, so there's a special file that's called dot git ignore, and we're going to create that in this directory. So I'm going to create a new file in the root directory in my project. I'm going to call it git ignore. And I'm going to say, now, now this time I'm actually going to say I want to add this. This is actually like a really brilliant feature of git. So in git, the git ignore file tells git which files you'd want to ignore. It's just another file that just lives in the repository like any other file. Right? So there's nothing special about it uh, except the format of it, which we'll look at in a minute. There's actually already a git ignore file in my repository. It's over here in the dot idea directory. So when you set up idea, it by default will ignore certain files in the directory that it uses to store its information. Okay, so now here, you know, um, I want to I, I want to do a, a brief, and unfortunately, idea doesn't present this information very well for us. So bear with me here. Um, so open up the terminal in your, and run the following command, okay? People that took 225, you guys use this in 225? Has anyone ever run get status before? All the time, there we go, see? That's, what, that's what I like to hear. So this is, like if you use git from the command line, this is probably one of the most common git commands to use. This tells you the status of the repository, all right? So Let's look at the output from this, because there's really, unfortunately, this is actually much more useful than looking at anything IntelliJ is going to tell us. This tells me the branch I'm on. I haven't committed anything yet, so so far there are no commits in this repository. It tells me changes that are going to be committed. Now in Git, there's a one-time process of adding a file. Once you tell Git to track a file, it'll always track changes to that file. But until you tell Git to track a file, it will not. So what Git is saying down here is that these files are untracked. If I do a commit right now, the only information that's going to be saved in this repository is about this .git ignore file. Now down here, you'll see that I've got like, you know, a, a bunch of different things. I've got these Gradle configuration files, um, and then I have some of these hidden directories, right? Now some of this, so here's the thing, and actually let me, let's add a source file. Well, you know what, we'll do that in a minute. Okay, so here's the thing. Some of these files are things that I want, and some are not. And so what I want to be able to do is I want to tell Git that there are certain files here that I do not want it to ever add, right? And why I do this is by using the file called git ignore. You can put your git ignore file anywhere but the path in getting more relative to wherever that file is. All right, so let's let's see an example of this. The files in the .gradle directory, these are, so on, on you know, Unix systems, dot directories are hidden. These are designed to store hidden information. So Gradle is storing some stuff in here, and I think what Gradle uses this for is this like when it downloads jar files and libraries and stuff like that, it puts a bunch of stuff in here. But this directory should never be checked in the root directory, okay? So we want to tell Git that I want to ignore this. The way I can do is I put on the first line of my git ignore file dot Gradle. Okay, now when I rerun git status, you'll see that the dot Gradle directory is no longer included in this list. Because I've told Git, ignore that directory. Never ever check anything in this one. Okay? Now every, so, and this is something you do when you set up a project, right? I have a long list of Git ignores that we could add, but we're gonna do this a little bit more incrementally, right? So you sort of go through this and you say, okay, let, let's go now file by file, let's think about do we want this, right? Um, so the dot idea directory, so this is, this is actually information that we can commit. This is an idea configuration. So if you give this to another person and let them use it, and they clone it, and they're using IntelliJ as their editor, this will mean that they'll get all the configuration that you've set up for the project in IntelliJ, which is actually really nice. We want that, right? So we're gonna leave that alone. 
What about our Gradle configuration? Do we think that this should be in the repository? Is this a file that we want to track changes? Absolutely. It's like one of the most important files in the entire repository. It tells, you know, someone else exactly what dependencies we're using, how to build the project. So this file we want to keep. Gradle.properties turns out to be a file that's important to Gradle. We're going to leave that alone. Um, these two things are the Gradle um, wrapper. This is actually how you run Gradle. So for example, if I wanted to run Gradle from the command line, I could do Gradle wrapper and then I could run like tasks. This will actually work after Gradle thinks for a while because it's depressingly slow. Yeah, there you go. And that Gradle has told us all the different tasks that we can run. Um, and so again, if you like working from the command line, Gradle is actually a tool that you can use from the command line quite easily. Um, I'm going to be using it from the IDE most of the time, but when I'm developing, I usually will use it from the command line rather than from the IDE. It's a little easier. Okay, so let's run get status again. See how we're doing. Okay, so this stuff we want to keep, these files we want to keep. What's in this directory? Let's try to figure that out. So if we run get status dash u, it'll print off all the files that um, it's that are currently untracked. And so you can see a bunch of them are inside that idea directory. And then there's also a couple in this Gradle directory. And these turn out to be things that we want, right? This stores information about which version of Gradle we're using. It's actually something we're gonna have to change in a minute. All right, so the rest of this I think is okay. So, so now, again, if I go back and I do my, go back to VCS, let's actually do git add. So remember, this is a one-time step that we use to tell Git that I want to track a file. All the files that are marked in red here are untracked. So let's add them. So go up and you need to select the root of the project, and then we're going to go to the VCS window, Git, and hit Add. Oh, nope, 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 stop. Sorry. I should look at my screen, not that up there. Uh, VCS, Git, Add. And now what happens? So now all of these files are green, except for which one? Workspace, why? Because that file's ignored. Remember, if I look in the git ignored that's inside this directory, it says to ignore workspace.xml. So that file's ignored. Let's go back to the terminal again. And again, I hate, I hate doing this. I really promise people to try to avoid the terminal because it tends to scare people. But um, if I run git status again, now you'll see that the next time I do a commit, I've got, these are the files that are going to be included in the commit. So I've got the stuff in the idea directory I want, I've got the build.gradle and the gradle properties and all the stuff that's inside gradle's unhidden directory. I've got the gradle wrapper and gradle wrapper.bat, which is for Windows, and I've got my gradle settings file, and this is all good. It's all stuff I want. All right, so that's actually now run an initial commit for the project. We go here to the VCS pop-up, we do commit, You'll see up here that idea is telling me which files are going to be included, and I can say something like initial project commit. Okay, awesome. This, so IntelliJ is trying to be helpful here. Uh, the, the warnings that it's going to show you are not important at this point, uh, so we can hit commit. It's okay. Um, okay, great. So now if I go back, Again, just to show you from the terminal and run git status, you'll see nothing to commit working directory clean. So this means that there are no changes in the project that git needs to know about, or that, or that git is detecting, right? If I change a file that's ignored, it's not included. Okay, so let's actually put some, let's actually load some code into our repository, because that's what we're here to do. Uh, so let's go into the source directory, sorry delete this Java directory because I'm, again, I'm OCD. And then we're going to create our main.kt file in here, hit add. Oh, sorry. So when I, when I, that pop-up, I just missed that really quickly. When that pop-up came up, that was uh, IntelliJ telling me, do you want to add this file to uh, the project? And I do, right? This is a file that I do not want to ignore. It has code in it. This is one of the main things I want to commit. So I don't want to write a main method yet. So what I'm going to write is a hello method, in this is Kotlin code. This is a hello function that returns a string, and all I'm gonna do is have it return hello world. That's it. 
it's going to complain it's never used. That's okay. So now let's go down. And if we did, if we were using git through this pop-up, I would go to commit and I would see that there is, there are changes that I could commit. I don't want to do this yet, right? Um, but now this is the workflow that we're in. So this is telling me, you know, I made changes. Here's what I added. Right? I added this box. However, let's do something else. Let's build the project. So I can click this icon. It's one way to do it. Um, you'll see it completed pretty quickly, but let's go over here and run our git status again, or our git commit. Uh, all right, so now you'll see, um, well, actually, where did the build directory go? Sorry, oh, okay. So here's the thing. If I run git status down here, you'll see I, and, and, and so, and so git is actually, um, git actually maintains two versions of a file in this state. So this is the version that I added when I created it. This says that there are changes that I haven't committed yet. But then down here, there's this untracked build directory. Now this is one of those places where I think IDEA, IntelliJ sort of gets in the way here. Because IntelliJ won't show you the files in the build directory in its commit view. It knows that those files shouldn't be committed. But if you were working on this project using a different uh, system or you're working at the command line and you did, so for example, if I do a git status dash u, you'll see, look at all this stuff in the build directory that was just created. Is this stuff that I want to check into my repository? Who thinks the answer is yes? Who thinks the answer is no? Yeah, so build products are typically not committed, okay? And again, I hate, I hate to slag on 225, but 225 does not know how to set up git ignore properly, right? 225 allows you guys to commit object files and all sorts of other garbage, right? Why don't I, so, so actually it's a good question though, why don't I commit build files? I could, just stick them in there. Why not? Yeah. Well, who cares? Uh, so it, it would increase the size of my repo, right? But why don't I, why don't I commit these files? Yeah. They are created every time I build, but yes. Uh, they are right now, but if I commit them and I push them, then they'll be on GitHub, right? You guys are getting there, okay? What What is true about build files? Yeah, so I, I don't. I think you guys are saying the right thing, but I'm not sure you understand why it's right, right? So the build files are created from the source file. The build files are a product. I don't need the build files if I have the source files because I know how to recreate them. So if you give me the source and you give me Gradle and your configuration, I can recreate the same build files. So I don't need to, these are something, again, what some things we call build products. They don't need to be checked in because they can be created from the source files in my directory and the configuration. Okay, so again, let's go back to my git ignore file and I'm gonna stick a new directory in here. This is, this is build. So if I end this with a slash, this means Gradle will ignore the build directory. And you'll notice that I didn't start it with a slash. Gradle will now ignore any directory called build in the project. So even if it's source build or source main build, it doesn't matter. Right? I never want to put build files in my, and now if I run git status, you'll see exactly what I want. Right, so I modified git ignore, that's gonna be part of my commit, and I've modified main.kg, that's a file that I want to include. All right, so now let's commit again. There is really no rule about how often to commit. Commit early, often, okay, sweet. Questions at this point? So now we have a project set up, we have Get integrated, and again, this is particularly important. You know, the earlier you install, uh, here's one way to think about it: the earlier you add Git, the earlier you re rec recover from mistakes, because we're about to do some things that we might regret. Right? I might make some change to the project configuration, and be like, "Oh my gosh, what happened? It's terrible." Once I have Git, I can always walk back to one of my previous commits and get out of the problem. Right? It's not necessarily trivial to do, but it's possible if you have Git. You can also figure out what happened. Okay, so let's go back. So last time, if you guys remember, we installed some testing, 
and we installed this library called Kotlin test. We're going to do that again quickly, and then we're going to write a test case for our hello world function. All right, so down here, this was the bit that we needed to grab for our build.gradle file. So this says that when I am testing my code, I have a dependency on Kotlin test. This is the library that we're going to use for testing. There are many other choices. This is the one that we're going to use. And then also this configures testing task to use a JUnit platform, which means that my test will work. When you change build.gradle, idea will remind you that you should import it again, which you can do. This makes sure that I have the libraries that I've configured the project to use. So one of the things that's happening right now is Gradle is saying, okay, I need to go and get a copy of this library in the right version, and that's stuck inside that .gradle folder. All right, so now we're gonna actually write a test, um, and the testing style that we're going to use here is the simplest one, which is this string spec style. So the string spec allows us to provide a string that describes the test, and then an anonymous function or a closure that runs the actual test. And we're gonna use this to write a test against our, our hello function. We're gonna put that in the testing directory after I delete Java. We're gonna create a file called test main. I do wanna add this to my project. I'm gonna go back up here, I'm gonna look at how this looks. So I need to create a new class We'll talk about more about classes in Kotlin next week, but you might notice that this looks, what does it look like I'm doing here? Anybody want to take a guess? Yeah, David? What about the first line though? What about line three? What does this look like? Yeah, people coming from job, you guys haven't seen this before, but that's going to do use your intuition. For What's that? Yeah, there, there, is, there is a lambda expression here, right? But what about, again, what about line three? Yeah. Okay, so, th well, but, but yeah, no, oh, save that answer for a minute. What about the first part of line three? Class test main, what is that, what am I doing? Declaring a new class, yeah. So this says I'm declaring a class called test main, and the colon syntax says I'm inheriting from a class called string spec. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to configure this to run my test. So the format of these looks like this. I say what the test should do, and then I uh, define, and then I can put in any number of different um, conditions that must be true in order for this test to pass. So in this case, when I call hello, the result should be this is one of the matchers that's provided by Kotlin test. This result should be hello world. So I'm expecting this string back when I write when I run this test. Okay. Now I'm going to run my test and I'm going to see that it passed over here on the right. Okay, great. So now I have a test case. Now let's uh, let's commit. Uh, While well the going is good here go back to my commit dialog. You'll see that there's one file selected, which is the testing main function, added to test. Okay, commit. Done. Okay, so last time somebody po <laughs> pointed out this scary warning down here, right? About something, blah, 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 okay? Um, so who would like to suggest a strategy for getting rid of this? What's that? Scroll down. Okay, I'm at the bottom. Yeah. Google that shit, yeah. I mean, you guys are laughing, but like this is actually what you do, <laughs> right? Okay. Um, now, you know, there's, there's clearly this is not a problem that's unique to us. Um, there's one more piece of information that we need to really make this search better. So again, you could start reading these and you might figure out what to do, right? But when did we start having this problem? Or testing, right? What library are we using for testing? It's called Kotlin test. So now, all 
I have to do, add this, and now, now you can see I've already been here today, um, rehearsing, right? So, so now, you know, this is the actual exact description of the error message that we're getting, right? Um, and, you know, look, let me just give you a time-saving tip when you find yourself on something like this. Scroll to the bottom and then start working your way upward. Um, okay, so, and this is relatively recent. So again, another thing when interpreting GitHub, like if you're not seeing something from the past couple of years, um, probably maybe move on. All right, so this says I can solve this by attaching this impl blah, 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 implementation in your tests, okay? And now, again, unfortunately, this is Gradle coming to bite us. I've got this, okay? So what am I going to do with this information? Who wants to try, who wants to, who has an idea of what to try? I've got to look at this and I'm thinking like, again, I mean, I, I feel like, you know, somebody is saying that I can solve this and it seems like people are endorsing this as the fix, but what do I need to do? What do you guys want to try? Yeah. Yeah, so this looks like these, this, these uh, dependency coordinates, right? And again, because we're using, um, because we're using the Kotlin, go away, because we're using the Kotlin Gradle script, this is how our dependency coordinates look. Right? So it's all one string. What we have here is an older, I think this is for um, Groovy. If I just try to paste this in, it is not happy. Okay? Because this is for a different, um, different type of build script. But if I pattern match here and I say, okay, let's try defining this as an implementation for my tests. Now I'm going to put it in the format that Gradle wants, which is with the group separated by colons. All right, now at least it seems like the build script is correct. And let's see what happens. So we're going to sync again. And now we're going to rerun the test. Look at that. Angry red warning gone. Don't you guys feel better? I mean, I'm not kidding, right? Like, if you're running tests and there's red output, that is destroying, like, some of the psychological benefit of running a test and it's, an and it's happening. I'm serious. Like, you want red to mean fail, right? Like, for example, if I change, if I've messed up my hello world function and I run the test, now I see red over here, right? This is bad. Something bad happened. My test didn't pass. So, so, you know, something small like that, you know, is, is this stuff that's super easy to figure out how to do? Not always. It requires a little hunting around. I mean, I've got a lot more practice than you've have, you guys have, but, but it's worth it. Okay. Now, let's do, let's do the next thing in terms of our project hygiene. This is going to be, this is exciting, actually. All right. First of all, let's just, let's see if we have anything to commit here. I don't think we do. Um. Oh no, we have to, we have to, cha we made this change to our build.gradle file, right? So we're going to say six logging error message. That's awesome. Okay, sweet. So now let's run our test suite. We see it passes. We feel good. All right. Next thing that we're going to uh, do is install a plugin for Intel, for Gradle that's going to help us with formatting our source code. All right, so code style is, so, you know, some of you guys took 125 and complained because we used check style and you want to put braces in weird places and stuff like that, right? But here's the thing. Code style, code formatting is not something that you should have to think about, okay? There is a right way, and then there are other ways. Um, and let's just do, let's just have things done in the right way. Now, here's the thing. If there is a right way, what should I be able to do? Let's say that we agree that there's a right way to write Kotlin code. What should I be able to create? There is one right way to write Kotlin code. Okay, yeah. 
So I could create a style guide, okay, and then I could read it, and I have to sit there remembering, like, what am I supposed to do or whatever. But if there's a right way, what can I use to help me? What's that? Code. I can write code that takes my grubby, poorly formatted Kotlin code and just reformats it so it's right. Okay, that's the benefit of having a right way. So that's what we're going to do. Trust me, you guys will thank me for this. There are, there are languages, so for example, Go, right? In Go, the format of the language is part of the specification. There is not disagreements about how to format Go, Go code because Go has said this is how to format Go code, right? Now you can do your own thing, but when Go, Go actually has a tool that will reformat automatically for you. So that's what we're going to, going to install. This is sometimes known as a linter. The one that we're going to use is KT Lint. Okay? You go to their home shed, you go to their home page. Um, does anyone know what the term bike shedding refers to? Yeah, yeah. So, t but why, why, does anyone know where the term comes from? So, bike shedding is like the process of having a long, drawn out disagreement about something that turns out to be immaterial. Does anyone know where the term originated? Yeah. Yeah. So if we Google that shit, the act of wasting time on trivial details while important matters are inadequately attended to. Um, and yeah, here we go. So this is the, the law of triviality. Is the argument that members of an organization to get yeah, where is the bike shit? There's a, there's a story behind this. What is bike shedding? Uh, I think it was, this was in Cambridge, of course. Ah, ah, here we go. So, so the person who came up with this observed that a committee whose job it was to approve plans for a nuclear power plant spent the majority of its time essentially designing a staff bike shed. This was a real thing that happened in the world. Like this was a group of people that was supposed to be meeting to design a nuclear power plant, and instead they spent m a huge amount of time arguing over, you know, details about a bike shed. So, so what does it mean to be an anti-bike shedding linter? It means that we're not going to argue about format. It's it's dumb, okay. And we're also going to allow a computer program to do the work for us. All right, so. You guys can read, you know, again, you know, one of the nice things about KT Lint is that it just has rules. There's no configuration. We're not going to make any decisions. We're just going to use the style that it wants. Um, it also has a really nice uh, integration with IntelliJ, which is what we're about to do. Okay. So again, down here it says there are a couple different ways to integrate with Gradle. This is the one that we're going to use. Okay. So this is a plugin that somebody wrote for Gradle that automatically will apply KTLint to the Kotlin files in that browser, right? So whenever you're looking for something in, you know, in Gradle, the question is, how do I install this? How do I add this to my plugin block? So back here, you'll see that if I go to my build.gradle, my plugins block is up here. I'm going to put something in here to get this plugin installed. This is close to what we want. Okay, which is down here. Um, you could also use this, but we have this new plugins block that was introduced in Gradle. Gradle has also changed things all the time. It's another thing that makes it really frustrating to use. Okay, if I just paste this in here, there's a couple of problems. One is that in Kotlin, the ID thing is a fu is a function. The second, what's the second problem here? Yeah, current version is not going to work. Um, I need to figure out what the current version is. If I scroll up to the top here, I'll see that the current plugin version is 9.2.1. All right, so this is going to be super easy. All right, so this is awesome. I've got my new plugin, and it's going to just work. Except that it is not going to just work. <laughs> um, all right, so so again, you know, this is like these are these are these are these are real struggles, right? Um, what are we going to do now? Anyone have a suggestion? Google that shit. Yeah, let's try that. Um, 
So, and again, when you see something like this, there's like this art to figuring out what to Google for, right? Because there's all this information here. You know, I don't know how I do it. I feel like I try to find something that's like easy to cut and paste, but also seems like it's descriptive enough. So for example, like this over here, or may maybe actually the next line looks really interesting. Could not generate a decorated class. That looks awesome. Okay, so let's try that. I don't, I'm not even sure I can cut and paste this properly. Let's try, could not generate, yeah, look at that, just happens to be in here. And it looks like I found my way to the KT Lint plugins error table. And what is the suggested resolution here? So someone else basically looks like it has the exact same problem. This was December of last year, pretty recent. What do they suggest that this would be? Update Gradle. So, so let's try to figure out if we need to do that. So if I go back to my project, unfortunately Gradle doesn't have just a single task you can use to figure out what the version is. But if I go down here back to my command line and I run Gradle W or Gradle W dot bat, whatever, depending on what you're using, whether you're on Mac or Windows, you'll see that my Gradle version is 521. The Gradle version that's required to support this is 541. So I'm behind. Now, the next question is, how do I fix this? Right, so let's look in, so again, let's look in the Gradle directory. So there are two things in here. There's this Gradle wrapper dot properties. And if I look at that, do you guys see the version number in here? It's a little hard to see, but it's there. So this is basically telling Gradle where to get the, the Gradle uh, jar from that contains all the code for this project. And it's telling it to use this version, Gradle 5.2.1. Now you guys can look this up if you want, but the current most up-to-date version of Gradle is 6.1.1. All right, so I've, I've fixed this, and let's try refreshing the project. Now this time it's gonna take a little bit longer because Gradle actually has to restart. Um, so it's gonna load the build, it's gonna configure things, bit. Okay, and now it looks like everything's okay. I'm not having that failure I was having before. So I can run this again and everything's good. So I've successfully upgraded Gradle. Let's go back to the terminal and run this command again. And you'll see that now I'm on Gradle 6.1. So let's see how this thing is going to help me. So now I've installed this plugin and the question is like, what does it do? Um, how do I use it? Remember last time when we installed a plugin, we noticed that it added some tasks that I can run in my project. And you'll see here, there's a similar feature in that there are now formatting tasks that I can run. So let's look at one of these. KT Lint format. Let's try running this and see what happens. All right, it's done. I'll hit import changes again. Now let's go over to my source code and let's make a change that it would fix. Okay, so let me remove the white space here. So KTLint says that there should be white space after a function definition before the type. So let's watch KTLint enforce that rule. So I reran the formatter on my code, and you'll see there it is. So now you can write whatever messed up Kotlin code you want, right? As long as it's parsable. You can't write gibberish, right? Don't like finish the project for me. But anything you do write, you run the formatting task, KTLint will fix the format for you, right? Now, other thing that we want to do here. So one of the things that's going to irritate us is that as we're working on this project, IntelliJ will want to format the code slightly differently than KTLint does. Now, the nice thing is there's a way to fix this. So there's a, and if you guys read the documentation, um, you'd find this, but I, I read it for you, so I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, and actually, it's under the help. It's under help for some reason. So there's a task down here, 
And actually, before we do this, let's commit. Commit and see. Use some good practices here. So we're going to say add jp lint to project. That's what we did. And update Gradle. So we also did that. Right? OK, sweet. Yeah, these are the same things that we saw before. Uh, and I'm just going to ignore them. OK, cool. So now let's go over here. So there's this task now in the help section that's called ktlint apply to idea. Let's run this and see what happens. So now it says, please restart your IDE. The reason is that ktlint has modified some of the files that IDE uses, to IntelliJ uses to figure out how to configure stuff. So if we run our, let's run our commit task over here. And you'll see that there are these changes that were made to code style config and to project.xml. So essentially, ktlint has now configured IntelliJ so that the code you write in IntelliJ will automatically, if you don't fight with it, will automatically match the ktlint rules. So now we're going to follow its instructions. We'll restart IntelliJ. Start this up again. Reopen our project. And we're good to go. So again, I mean, this you know, this type of thing will save you a lot of trouble, right? In the sense that now, you know, as you're working, you don't have to a, if you don't fight with IntelliJ, it's going to format things for you properly. B, um, even if you have formatted things a little bit incorrectly, you have a way to just fix it, right? And this is something that you know, when you work at a big company or whatever, um, this is going to happen automatically. Anywhere you work that has a sane development environment that's going to have rules about how the code looks that everybody ex is expected to follow. The nice thing about these rules is that if we're very strict about them, we can actually write a program to just generate things for us. All right, questions at this point? Yeah. I think Java might. I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. Does Java have something? It probably does. I mean, every sort of sane language has a tool like this. Other questions. So that that I'm I'm tempted to go on, except that the next step is to. Well, you know what? Let's go on. You know, this is wise. What time is it? I'm in a weird, weird place. All right, I think I'm going to wrap up for today. Uh, the next step is going to be in to install the library that we're going to use to write our web API. This project that you just created, don't get rid of it. We're gonna keep. We're gonna keep. I'll push a copy of this to GitHub. Actually, why don't we do that? Let's do that to set this up. So right now, one of the things that you guys may not realize about Git is that by default, when you create a new Git repository, it doesn't live in the cloud. It lives on your machine. So if I destroy this, it's gone. So Git will help you save your work. But if you only store the Git repository on your machine and you the machine dies, you accidentally delete that directory or whatever, it's toast. So what we want is we want to, to push our work to somewhere like GitHub. So that when we do that, GitHub will not have a copy of all the files associated with our project. Once we do that, even if we switch machines or a machine dies or we actually delete stuff, we have a copy that we've saved. All right, so let's go over here to the DCF tab. Um, and now let's go, let's go somewhere to Git. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's try share project on, let's try share project on GitHub. Okay, that's, uh, so now you're gonna need to, to provide your login and password. Um, I should be able to do this without exposing everything to everybody. Oh, look at that. Do copy password. I've typed this so many times, it's embarrassing that I still can't type it. Okay, there we go. So, be challenged, password, try to log in. Okay. So, I'm sending this to my own GitHub uh, account. You guys might have a, another one. Hopefully, you have, ha hopefully, everybody here has a GitHub account. Um, 
it doesn't need to be private, um, and I'm going to hit share. Let's see. So this will do a couple of nice things for me. It creates the repository and stuff like that. Um, and now let's go and make sure that it's actually where I expect it to be, which is here. And there it is. And you'll notice, again, and this is particularly noticeable when you use git push, what's not here? Right, so what didn't get pushed? The build directory, .gradle, right, all the files that I ignored did not get pushed. And that's what I want. I don't want those files to be part of the repository. They're only available locally. All right, I'll post a link to this on, I'll probably move it somewhere. I'll post a link to it on the forum for you guys to get started. But um, but again, don't delete this because this is what we use uh, when we pick up on Monday. All right, I will see you guys then. Have a good weekend.